Welcome back to the Urban Suburban Garden. In today's episode, we're gonna go take a look at the two gardens. I got both of them completed, operational. All of them have the, uh, the vegetables in there, the fruit. So let me take you off the tri-by and give you a closer look. I'm gonna talk as I walk around, but as you can see, I extended this area here out. And as soon as I get you off the tripod, you'll see it a little closer. I have my white potatoes over here and it's a tomato plant over there. But as I said, I have white potatoes in here. I once had them right behind those strawberries right there. A, I'll show you the sections, the empty spot there between the strawberries and the carrots. But these white potatoes were getting so big and I had this empty spot here from this extension that I made. I said, oh, why not just put them right in here and let them do their thing? Getting plenty of sunlight. Obviously the soil was fertilized beautifully because these things are rocking. I already backfilled them one time. And um, with these particular pots here, they fold down. They're like sweet potato, potato pots. So what you can harvest from this door that sits right here. It's Velcroed shut here now. But as the plant grows, I just backfill soil and bring the bag up. So I got about one more time that I could backfill, give myself another three to four inches, and then that bag would be fully folded up. See here. So yeah, I just slide it up like that as I need to backfill. And I just did it about a week ago. So that's how each one of them look. And you see the little doors down there. So later on in, in the season, I can open that door up and see what I have going on down there. But yeah, as a, up top here, I mean, they are huge. So yeah, the white potatoes are doing fantastic. Let me spin back around on the other side over here. That's where I kind of stage my water hose for this area here. I do have a trellis, uh, tomato cages sitting right here. If I need them for these zucchinis, this is a zucchini growing here. As you can see, that's my, uh, it's called a, um, a husky cherry red tomatoes. We're gonna go grow right up there. And if I need to, I can use the fence to the, the fence to vine up it. And that zucchini here, like I said, I'm more than likely throw one of these on here, or I got plenty of fencing here. I can let her grow up the fence also. With just a little support from the tomato cage. Let's go inside and see what we got going on in here. I'll start over here on the right. This is where I keep all my yellow squashes and my baby squashes are over here. I don't know how my broccoli label got put here because broccoli is actually over here. Sorry about that. But yeah, this is the yellow squashes. Yellow squashes over here, baby squash are on that side there. And I'm going to use a couple of tomato cages on these two and I'm gonna guide it up the cage so we don't get them growing all over the place. The little white powder you see back there on that, it's just some calcium powder, oyster shell powder. I put on here to assist with the uh, calcium that uh, the melons and zucchinis and tomatoes, they need the extra calcium to pre help prevent the uh, blossom and rot that goes on with those. So yeah, I did those already section here like I just said was, was all my broccoli. This section is six different sections so it's six six broccoli plants down there. Get low so you can see. And they're doing pretty damn well. This one here was getting ravished a little bit by some bugs. Um, the worms or beetles I couldn't find them but I have sprayed since and I haven't seen them since so the BT stuff uh, works pretty damn well. Let's go over to the next section here. It's my onion patch, which, is, which, in, which isn't doing very well at all this season. I have onions from those over there in the middle of those two there, red onions. That's from last year. They've been in here for since last September. And these ones that are growing up here in the front are some I threw out here about a month ago from out of my kitchen. They were already growing these little shoots. So I brought them out here, threw them in here, and they've taken off. But in the back rows, I'm gonna get in here pretty close. Might be able to see. See those little hairs coming out, little green grass hairs look like coming out of there. On the back, this is the uh, the red onions back here. And that's what those are. 
the other things are just weeds that need to come out. Get rid of that. But yeah, they're not doing too well. Same thing over here. Again, all those these are doing better over here than the other side. But they're pretty slow, so I don't expect to get anything from these and probably the next year. In the front rows, these are also to be the yellow sweet onions, and I didn't get any to germinate off the seeds I put in that spot there. So later on in the season, we're going to throw something in there. But we're going to just rock with what we got. And if we get anything, we, that'd be great. If not, I'll do better the next time around with the onions. My flowers are doing pretty well. This section here is all my beets. And they're getting a little ravaged by too much sunlight here. And I ordered a, um, a tart. Uh, I mean, uh, a shade cloth, excuse me, um, today. And once that gets here, I am going to do some reorganiz reorganizing of this uh, garden here. It's a good thing about growing in these bags, I can move these rounds as needed. Because a lot of the plants I got kind of in places that uh, a lot of sunlight comes in this garden. Let's put it that way. And at this point in the, the season, we're in uh, the end of May, it's about May 23rd. Still spring, but it's getting kind of warm in this area here. And uh, a lot of my spring stuff that I should have got in about a month earlier, I didn't get in earlier, I got in late. So, uh, they're suffering from some heat. Like the, like I said, the, look at the leaves there on the beets. Getting a little beat up there. So again, I'm gonna put a shade cloth over the area, but after I reorganize the garden, cause I have, uh, let's swing around here. Here are my, my purple beans and my uh, green beans. And you can see the, this side over here is already caught onto the trellis like I wanted it to. And it's gonna be running up here. And this is the new trellis in that area, trellis area, excuse me, for my beans. Last year, if you remember, if you watched me last year, my bean section was right here and it was all green beans. And I had them grow up this, the bottom part of it, and the fencing was there, but not the top part. And the top part was the bamboo stake, uh, some bamboo that I kind of taped together and made a trellis net. But this year, since it did so well last year in this area, I said, well, let me clean this up. I uh, just extended the, the poles, as you can see here, up all the way around to there, and then added the green fencing. So, and then just to make it a little sturdier, I grabbed some of uh, these metal rods that you, more like garden stakes, and I just made this green fencing place off because it's all plastic, a little sturdier. I need to put a couple more right on this side here. and. Um, so as the beans grow up and the leaves, and the vines grow up, excuse me, and uh, the leaves develop, it won't be putting all that weight on this, uh, all this plastic and pulling it down. So it was a nice little system. I'm sure it'll work really well. But as I said, this one back here has already caught on. I was trying to angle this one towards it and accidentally broke this one off. So now I gotta wait for this shoot here to catch up and go over there and catch on. Over here, this one here, as you can see, it is leaning right towards it. And these are the purple beans here. And this one here is uh, is getting there. This one was smaller than the rest of them. It was put in after everything else. So she's eventually, now she's taken off. And then we have some kind of flower or something starting to develop here since it started growing up. I said, let me leave it there and see what it, what it is. I know that's not weed. But that's what the bean section looks like. And over here, Again, another flower. And here is my uh, cabbage. So, again, I'm going to reorganize this whole area right over here because this empty container here doesn't need to be here. So, I could swap it out with these, um, these uh, beets. And my shade cloth could be covering this area here because I have my cabbage, I have romaine lettuce, I have carrots. All of these are take, you know, don't need as much sun, direct sun, even over there, my spinach, those things there can be all in this section over here. And I'm gonna put the shade cloth um, back up a little bit. You can see 
the shade cloth will cover this area here, outside of the, my beans area. They'll, they'll be fine, they'll get plenty light. But yeah, I'm just gonna tarp it over this whole section right here to cover these. So we can uh, keep maximum growth. Don't stress the plants out, but so much. Now the weather isn't bad today. Today is only in the 70s. Yesterday was a little warmer than this, and these were, you can tell, these was all drooping over. But uh, I think I got it straightened out now. But let me keep going with the tour. Like I said, this is my cabbage area, and they were getting ravaged a little bit by the, uh, some bugs, some worms, I guess. That's what it was, and I sprayed them, and I think I got it. I don't see any new, new uh, vegetation being eaten up, new leaves being eaten up, so I think I might have gotten that under control for now. Over here, like I said, my romaine lettuce. And then right next to it, my sweet potato section. And these vines here are eventually going to start taking off. They're doing pretty well. I see them standing up. Keep plenty of water on there, it'll be fine. As we move along, spinach, which I could actually start harvesting some of this stuff here instead of letting it wilt away because I got a little bit wilting near a couple other leaves in there wilting because too much sunlight so yeah I'll definitely start taking them off here and down here in this section here which needs the light would be the uh, my pepper plants here the first two here and here the one on the uh, right here on my uh, right would be uh, sweet peppers this hot peppers this cucumber cucumber and then two tomato plants. This was gonna be all my tomato area here, but I had a change of plants. And then in the coming weeks, you'll see what I'm gonna do in this area to keep these all standing up. But this was some stuff that I tried to grow in here, seeds started in here, but they never came out, never germinated. And these are some, the ones that did germinate, and I need to get them out of here and start planting them. These two right here, just some flowers and marigolds from seeds. Everything else is a honeydew, melon, sugar baby, or cantaloupe. Yep, so that's what the center garden, I mean the bottom garden looks like. And as I just said a second ago, these are my carrots. I got orange carrots here and rainbow carrots here. And this is where the white potatoes were, but they were getting so big, that's why I moved them. My strawberry patch here are doing fantastic. I've been taking strawberries every day. Get down in here, and here's a nice one here. Take, yeah, the backside getting a little mushy. But yeah, I come down here every day and take some off and uh, eat them. So yeah, they're doing very well this year. So that's what the lower garden looks like. Let me take you up to the upper garden. So you can get a see get to see what she looks like up there. Now up here in the upper garden, we don't have anything growing in that pot yet, but in the coming days I'll have something in there. There's more flowers, that's the empty spot there also. But everything else is my corn, sweet corn. And they're doing fantastic. Just top dressed them with some, uh, what's that feather mill? And uh, for the nitrogen. And they're doing, like I said, fantastic. As we continue on, right down in here, another flower. But this is my melon section. Everything over here is some sort of melon. Cantaloupe down there. Sugar babies. And this is gonna be sugar babies. That is a sugar baby there. I think these are gonna be sugar babies I'm gonna add in there. Now, I know I'm putting a lot in here, and it's like, ah, why you got so many of them in one section? I wanted to see how do we grow. I only grew sugar berries last year for the first time, and I had uh, just maybe like four of them total, and I got a total of uh, seven or eight melons from all of, from those uh, four plants. So this year I said I'm gonna do it a little differently. Got a bigger section. You see my fencing up here now. So I am gonna actually be tying these melons off to the fence once they vine out. Now I'm gonna put another one of these poles here. I already did the one back here, so I don't need another one here. 
but just right here in this section, just to support the weight from once the melons get on there and they're not pulling on the fence, weighing them down. The sugar babies, the cantaloupe, and the honeydew melons will be up this section here now. Like just in this section so far, like I said, that's all I have going on over here is the, uh, the yellow watermelons across the front, sugar babies, sugar babies and cantaloupes across the back, and there's sugar babies here, cantaloupe on the end. And this one here is nothing here as yet, but I think I'm gonna put one honeydew melon here, which I have down in the red cups. I just showed you some uh, new uh, seedling starters that start just started that are bringing out my board outside to harden off to the outside. So one of the uh, one or two of the honeydew melons can go in here. Remember, I told you each one of these sections holds 16 gallons of soil, so you're pretty big. So maybe I'll put two of them in here and I'll let them vine out. Everything can run down there on it, on that tarp back there and just go on the ground. But if they're long enough, the sugar babies, the honeydew melon, and the cantaloupe, if they get back far enough, see the fencing right there, I could trellis them right up, time off, excuse me, up the fencing. And I have some bags, onion bags that I use to, uh, to put the melons in to support them up on the fence. See my dog over there chilling in our bed in the gazebo, out of the sun. But that's what's gonna be over here in this section here. Now over here, and there's three empty spots here, I have left them for also melons. I got a few of them down there. We'll bring them up here and let them vine going that way, up the fence, and then that way, do anyone that runs that way, they can run around on this tarp, right? I mean, there's a mat right back here and just let them grow down on the ground amongst the other ones. Let me see how it works. I know it's gonna be a little congested back there, but hell, I'll give it a shot, then make adjustments for next year. But that's what these three empty spots are. Uh, they're gonna be either that or uh, that's correction. That's, I did make a change, I did say I was gonna do that. This one spot, like I said, will be a honeydew. That spot is gonna be a honeydew. These two spots here are gonna be cauliflower. We've got a couple cauliflowers that I'm gonna throw up in this area here. This is an eggplant. All four of those across the back are zucchinis. And everything looks back there is doing pretty well. As you can see, along with this eggplant, we're gonna make our way down this way. Excuse my hand. We have the uh, tomatoes here. This is a uh, Cherokee purple here tomato. That one there is a, uh, a lemon boy tomato. And then up here is just all potatoes. Excuse my finger once again. This, this section here, section here, 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 and there in the corner are all red potatoes. That one right there is a white potato. That's like the ones that I have growing all the way down there in that little section there, white potato. It's one of those. I had a, didn't have any more room down there, so I threw it up here. But that's all I have going on up here in this garden here. Uh, as you can see, everything is looking pretty damn well. I did get a late start in the season. Early part of the year, I retired from my job after 37 years. And uh, so now I just have a lot of time dedicated to doing jobs around the house that I wanted to do. You know, my house right there. And then um, and out here in my garden. So now that I got started and going, I should have a pretty good harvest once I get around to it. Uh, again, did get a little slate start. That's why uh, my, especially my cool weather stuff that should have been gone about a month prior to me starting. I think I started stuff in April when it should have been started in March. I planted inside in February, uh, would have got me going. Like my IE, my uh, beets, carrots, broccoli, cabbage, all of those cold weather plants, lettuce, romaine lettuce, spinach. Yeah, they could have all been started earlier than when I started them. But we are off and running. And uh, just to, I didn't really get to show you the new fencing I did put up around here in my little door there. But yeah, that's what, 
2024 garden number two for the urban suburban garden. That's what it looks like. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, share, and subscribe. And until the next one, keep growing.